Food, fun, and competition take over Las Vegas, the business boom that's bringing a national TV network right here to the Valley. Next at 11. Las Vegas Church makes a fresh start after a crime forces them to close their doors. Tonight at 11, the community effort to get things back up and running just in time for the Easter holiday. Plus a drastic move to keep consumers happy by keeping prices down at the pump. What's being proposed to level out gas prices. And getting ready for Prince William and Kate's big day. Wedding fever stretches far beyond London tonight at 11. Las Vegas is a great city. It's very lively. There's just, it's tourists and it's local, so you get the best of both worlds. It's that attraction that's bringing a national cable network right here to Las Vegas, what they're doing on location in our town. Plus, turning tragedy into triumph, the odds that members of one church in the valley had to overcome to have a place to worship this Easter holiday. And the countdown is on until a history-making I do. We'll head to London to show you how they're making Royal Wedding Fever the toast of the town this week. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now, Weekend Edition. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Melissa Duran, in for Chris Alanya. A national competition is setting up shop right here in Las Vegas. The nationally syndicated Food Network, along with eight food trucks from across the country, are in town for the network's great food truck race. Food Network's crews are on hand filming all the action to see who can sell the most food. A News Now reporter Sheree Harvin stopped by two trucks and joins us with their story. What a fun time. I know, out of all the cities in the world, the Food Network chose Las Vegas as their first stop, Melissa. And the teams, by the way, are traveling to six cities in six weeks. And as we heard from two trucks around town, this market seems to be a popular place for food trucks. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. You know what? People are coming out of the woodwork. There are two food trucks from opposite ends of California, and they're strangers in Las Vegas, too. The vegan food truck is near Maryland and Sahara. It's better health-wise and, like, in your spirit, you just feel really great. It's good karma. And the devilish food truck is downtown near Fremont and 6th Streets. Las Vegas is a great city. It's very lively. There's just, it's tourists and it's locals. And a lobster creation. With there are two of eight trucks in town that will appear on season two of the great food truck race on the Food Network. And both teams are surprised at how well their kitchens are cooking in Las Vegas. I don't even know where these people are coming from to support us. So it is a good market. I didn't think it would be as great as as it is. They are very much warm and receptive to the idea of food trucks and super excited about it. Here's how customers describe it. It is quite refreshing. There's really limited options in Vegas for, for healthy food and or vegan food. And uh, we're thrilled that they're here. Food Network execs are secretive about what the grand prize will be, but for these chefs, it doesn't seem to matter. Teammates from both trucks say they left jobs in corporate America and finance and retail just to be their own boss and to show the world how rewarding it can be. Food is always going to be a, a culture that brings a lot of people together. So everyone's just pitching in and just like really trying to help us out. So it's awesome. Now, no word on when season two airs, and the Food Network's website says that the team that makes the least amount of money has to go home each week. Oh, the pressure's on then. Absolutely. All right, thanks so much, Sheree. A Las Vegas homeowner discovers a man dead in his backyard pool, and now police are investigating how it happened. Rescue crews responded to a home near Sahara and Sloan to a report of a drowning this afternoon. When crews confirmed the person was dead, they called police. A News Now talked with a neighbor who describes how the discovery was made. The neighbor is in the pool. I said, what? Went over there, was a guy facing in the pool. He looked like him too, but it wasn't until they pulled him out. Investigators say the body belonged to an adult black man, but they have not identified him. They did notice some strange marks on the victim's neck, and the case has been handed over to homicide detectives. Metro police are one step closer to solving a case after human remains were found in a person's backyard yesterday. Homicide detectives said today they have a person of interest. A homeowner in the 1300 block of Gold Avenue near Owens and MLK found the remains while digging in his backyard. Police say a married couple previously lived at the home and the man who still owns it is leasing it to the person who lives there now. Detectives are trying to track him down and say the human remains found may be those of his wife. Anyone with information on this case is urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number, 385-5555.
A Las Vegas church gets a new lease on life just in time for the Easter holiday. The Valley Bible Fellowship Church celebrated its grand opening celebration today of what members are calling VBF version 2.0. It's a new beginning after copper thieves damaged the church back in January. Police say the thieves did about $100,000 of damage when they stripped the church of its copper plumbing and wiring back in January, leaving this scene behind. But after several months of repair, and generous donations from the members, the church isn't letting the past get them down. A uh, new beginning for their own lives, a new beginning for their families, and a new beginning for their church. A new beginning despite the fact that police say the people responsible for the copper theft had not been identified and are still on the run. Members of a Mississippi church held a special celebration today honoring the anniversary of an event that rocked their community. We want to give thanks to the Lord for saving our people from the storm and also for uh, leading us through this year. One year ago today, a tornado completely leveled this two-story church in Yazoo City. Members are still worshiping in a temporary location a few miles away, but say they have something to be thankful for today. They are rebuilding and a new church is under construction right behind the old one. The flight schedule at Lambert St. Louis International Airport is returning to normal after a tornado ripped through the area on Friday. Flights are now both arriving and departing from the airport. Departures started back up today and airport officials say the flight schedule is running at about 70 percent. Maintaining day-to-day -day operations is a big effort while crews work to clean up the damage left behind from Friday's storm. Well, we have, as you can see, uh, the majority of the windows are, are boarded up, uh, still doing just a little bit of work on that, but the airport itself is structurally sound. The tornado that struck the airport on Friday night broke panes of glass, tossed a shuttle bus onto a roof, and damaged a few planes. Nine St. Louis County communities were also hit. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon says 750 homes in the area are damaged. A big name boxer is set to be back in the Las Vegas courtroom tomorrow for a trial surrounding a violence charge. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is facing a misdemeanor charge after investigators say he poked a 21 year old homeowner association guard in the face during an argument over parking tickets back in November. Now Mayweather's attorneys say he didn't do anything wrong and say this is nothing more than another allegation of the boxer having violent outbursts, particularly at Las Vegas clubs in recent years. A playing card proved to be the missing link that helped solve a West Coast murder case three decades in the making. Investigators near Seattle say this deck of cards full of the names and faces of unsolved killings played a key role. A prisoner saw this picture of the Queen of Hearts, a woman named Susan Schwartz, who was shot and strangled back in 1979. Just last week, that prisoner tipped police off about her killer. And now the victim's father says this could be the closure he needs to years of emotional distress. My way to get on after Susan did that was to pretend like it, that it didn't happen. It was almost just like a, like a movie. It, it wasn't real. See, I, can't, I couldn't handle the actual reality of her dying. Police have arrested a 57-year-old Seattle man in connection with the case. Detectives believe the suspect blamed the victim for his wife leaving him. A Nevada animal rights group is doing its part to make sure a bear hunting season doesn't happen here. The group NoBearHuntNB.org is appealing the state's Wildlife Commission vote to establish a bear hunting season. That vote came last December, but the group is trying to get it dismissed, claiming the commission did not consider the impact it would have on Lake Tahoe businesses. Commissioners are scheduled to hear the appeal on May 12th in Reno. Well, the plans are made, the countdown is on, and the world is waiting. It is a love story, and it's the perfect stage for that. Royal Wedding Week is officially here. The special additions to Westminster Abbey to make sure the big day goes off without a hitch. Plus, want to make gas prices stop climbing? Well, you're not alone. The new fight to keep drivers on the road for less. Well, it was hard to ask for a nicer Easter Sunday. The one thing we did have to contend with were some wind gusts out of the west and northwest to up to 25 miles an hour. And you can see they kind of dip, they ebb and flow, and they're going to stay with us overnight. But then things start to really calm down on Monday. So I'll have the rest of your neighborhood weather forecast coming up in just a few minutes. This portion of 8 News Now is brought to you by Lexus. 
watching 8 News Now Weekend Edition with Melissa Duran. The news for Southern Nevada is now. Excitement is building in Britain with the royal wedding now just five days away. Last minute preparations are underway across London and CBS's Charlie Daggett explains what's being done to make sure the wedding goes off without a hitch. The Queen's brass bands are practicing their marches with military precision. Workers are sweeping and polishing every inch of Westminster Abbey. Security teams say they hope to strike a balance, providing protection without stealing the spotlight on William and Kate's wedding day. Charlie Daggett of CBS News, London. It's going to be amazing to watch. Central London will be on lockdown for the wedding. That's a good thing because the bride will have just nine minutes to get from her luxury hotel to Westminster Abbey for the start of the ceremony. Well, if you can't wait until Friday, 8 News Now is your source for royal wedding information all week. We'll kick off our coverage tomorrow on 8 News Now this morning with Dave and Dana, and we'll be carrying the countdown through to the big day. Now, tune in on Friday starting at 1 a.m. for complete wedding coverage, and then join us that morning at 9 for a special edition of 8 News Now. Well, an environmental mishap launches a slew of concerns in one East Coast town. The hidden danger underneath the murky water in one major river. And getting some help to stop the pain at the pump. The national government is considering a move to level out prices. What one lawmaker is suggesting to get the ball rolling. Plus, two weeks into the job, we catch up with the new man in charge of the Run and Rebels basketball program. Hear Dave Rice's thoughts on making the transition from assistant to head coach later in sports. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now, Weekend Edition. People who live along one river in Pennsylvania woke up to a mess this morning. 50 gallons of oil spilling into the water. The fuel spill started overnight Wednesday when a maintenance vehicle spilled in Cumberland County. Crews thought the situation was cleaned up, but the fuel leaked into the ground and heavy rains on Friday pushed it into the Susquehanna River. People in the area say they knew something was wrong as soon as they stepped outside. I walked down to see what was going on and it was so strong smelling that I turned around and actually left. The entire area was permeated with the smell of fuel oil. It was strong and it was throughout the whole borough. And booms are now in place to skim the diesel fuel from the surface of the river and on land the ground is being checked through pipes. Well, another week means another trend of gas prices going up. The Lundberg survey just released today reports the average price of a gallon of gas is now $3.88 a gallon. That's a 12 cent increase over the past two weeks. Drivers in Chicago are paying the most. Check this out, $4.42 a gallon. Here in Las Vegas, our average price is at $3.87. With gas prices continuing to climb, one U.S. Senator says the trend has become too much. Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut went on CBS's Face the Nation today and called for the Justice Department to investigate what he calls a drastic increase. You want the Justice Department. Is the that Justice what you're saying? The Justice Department should take the lead, seize this moment, and send a message, a very strong deterrent message, that this country will not tolerate the kind of illegal speculation and trading and hedge fund activity that may be driving prices up. To give you some perspective, AAA claims the average price of gas has climbed more than a dollar per gallon compared to this time last year. Well, Mother Nature couldn't have granted us a nicer otherwise it was a little bit windy especially in the afternoon once the uh, kind of the sun was at its peak and the winds have been pretty consistent the higher elevations in the valley definitely saw the summerlands the northwest and near sunrise mountain saw sustained winds of upwards of 20 to 30 miles an hour so that kind of got in the way of some of the Easter egg hunting but it still couldn't put a damper on those uh, smiles at least when the kids got to open their uh, Easter presents or uh, chocolate I guess but it was certainly warm and windy in Laughlin and Kingman, they had winds of uh, upwards of 20, 35 miles an hour. So a beautiful day out at the lake. Our overnight lows right on target where they should be, right at the 60 degree mark tonight down at College of 95, even at 55 as kids go back to school down at uh, Southeast Career and Technical Academy. 48, the overnight low in Caliente. 49 at Zion National Park. A lot of
Parks, took advantage of the Clark County School District spring break and enjoyed the uh, beautiful beauties that Zion has to offer. I want to show you the highs across the country that we saw really ran the gamut. 85 in Phoenix, the high to 54 in Casper, Wyoming. Fargo at 62, Little Rock 83, dealing with the after effects of tornadoes there. Atlanta at 81 in Miami, a very humid 80. So very similar to the way it felt today. You can see the high for us at 80 and the low 60 right on target. Our average overnight low is at 56. The high back in 1946 set at 99. But this is the residual effects of those tornadoes that kind of uh, destroyed parts of East Texas moving up. But you can see our satellite and radar absolutely gorgeous and clear. Very few clouds in the uh, upper sky today. And that's the way it's going to be the rest of the week. Unfortunately, with the winds, though, if you have those allergies or even a little touch of it, you're going to be rubbing your eyes and nose thanks to that olive oak and mulberry. So as we look ahead towards the rest of the week, we're going to stay breezy tonight and into tomorrow morning, but we will be in the 80s all week long, even hit 90s by Thursday. So the overnight low, like I mentioned, 62 tonight, those west-northwest winds still going to hit 20 to 25 miles an hour in some parts of the valley, especially the higher elevations, but Monday 83, just lovely. The winds will die down as that uh, low pressure moves out. And then we get just a slight dip in temperatures with some more low pressure here on Tuesday. But then we warm back up to 83, 91 on Thursday, 89 in an absolutely glorious, clear and sunny weekend ahead. So enjoy the rest, the last few minutes of your Easter Sunday. All right, looks nice. Thanks so much, Calvert. All right, Scott, so I was on Twitter earlier today. Yeah. Everyone's talking about the Lakers. What's going on? Well, things are getting kind of dicey for the Lakers here in this series against the Hornets. Certainly has not been easy against New Orleans. So who did Kobe Bryant tune, turn to for motivational advice? His two young daughters. We'll show you if it helped tonight. And we chatted up with new Rebel basketball coach Dave Rice, who gives us his vision for Rebel recruiting. Sports is next. From 8 News Now, Sports with Scott Bemis. Kobe Bryant's two young daughters told their daddy it was okay for him to be on the road in New Orleans for Easter Sunday as long as he came back with a win. Lakers trying to go up 3-1 in the series and despite his daughter's words, Kobe would actually be held scoreless in the first half of the playoff game for the first time since 2004, but in the third, scores eight straight, brings the Lakers back within one. All right, later, we got a serious mismatch on the perimeter. Six foot Chris Paul, seven foot Andrew Bynum, and you see who wins that, CP3. He finished with a triple-double. All right, under 15 seconds left. Hornets by two. Paul driving, finds Jarrett Jack. He hits it right here. We got an upset in New Orleans. This series is all tied at two. It's getting interesting. Hornets win it, 93-88. To New York, now Knicks facing elimination. They're down 3-0 against the Celtics. Boston up 17 at the half in the third. Paul Pierce ran in the three. They lead by as many as 23, but the Knicks slowly start clawing away. They're clawing away. They're Clown away. Sean Williams hits the three in the corner. They're back within 10 after three quarters. Then it's Amari Stoudemire out in transition. Nice little finish. Knicks have life. They're only down six. Celtics regroup, though. KG, butter. Two of his game high 26. Boston sweeps New York in four. 101 89 is the final. How about LeBron in the Heat? Also looking to sweep in Philly. Second quarter. Miami is off and running, and when these two guys are off and running, usually a highlight develops. Yep, there's a highlight. LeBron throws it down from D-Wade. He had 31. Miami had a six-point lead with 95 seconds left, but then the pesky Sixers start showing some fight. Drew Holiday hits it, then Lou Williams from way out. Look at this. Sixers might win it. Down the stretch, they go to LeBron in the final seconds, but he can't get it to go. Philly stays alive. They win it. 86-82, they force a game five. Baseball now, Dodgers and Cubs from Wrigley. Let's check out the highlights. Some kids enjoying a little Wrigley Easter egg hunt before the game today. Andre Ethier, well, guess what? He's not enjoying an Easter egg hunt, but he's enjoying the game of baseball right now. This hit right here extends his hitting streak to 21, the RBI infield single. Dodgers would get five runs in the inning. That's more than enough for this guy. Dodgers starter Hiroki Kuroda, six and two-thirds, two earned, seven Ks. Dodgers win the rubber game, 7-3 over the Cubbies. From the big leagues to the minor leaguers. Let's check out some PCL baseball tonight. That's right, the 51's dropping their fifth straight, 10-4 at Colorado Springs today. Vegas starter Brad Mills, he'd only given up two earned runs and three starts this year, but he was roughed up for six runs in only five innings of work today. All right, golf, anyone? 
Final round of the Heritage. Third round leader Luke Donald. He would become the world's number one golfer with a win. All right, let's pause for a second about that storyline while we show you the shot of the day. Matt Kuchar on 18. <laughs> That's in the cup. He'd finish for a tie for 21st. Brant Snedeker, meantime, began the day six back, pretty seven of his first 12. Rolls in the tweeter on 18. He forces a playoff with Donald. And on the third extra hole, the Englishman needs to hold this one right here to keep the tourney going. Oh, that is rough. Snedeker wins it. Meanwhile, Lee Westwood wins in Asia, so he is now the new number one golfer in the world. Well, it's only been 13 days since Dave Rice was officially introduced as UNLV's new basketball coach. Yesterday, had a chance to catch up with Rice, and tonight, we're putting him under the Sunday spotlight. Would you please help me welcome David coming home, Dave Rice. It's been a whirlwind couple of weeks for Rice, getting acquainted with his players, the recruiting, the moving. It's a lot of hours. I mean, they're, you know, three or four hours of sleep a night. But again, I'm fortunate. I'm not a complaint at all. Having spent 17 years as an assistant, Rice is accustomed to the long hours associated with coaching. But he's still getting used to the demands of being a head coach. Because I think the biggest thing is just the demands on your time. Uh, just all the phone calls and all the text messages and appearances. And, and that's all part of it and it's all great. It's just, you know, you hope people understand that you try to get back to their phone messages and their texts as soon as you possibly can just with all that's going on. Rice has spent some time out on the recruiting trail the last couple weeks. And his primary focus has been players in his own backyard. We're just looking forward to, to really recruit in Las Vegas. We talked about the fact that that's our home base, and we've got to make sure we protect home base in terms of recruiting. There are a lot of great players across the country, but I think our first priority has to be Las Vegas. Rice confirmed to me that Grandy Glaze, a Kruger recruit, will not be headed to UNLV, so the Rebels now have two open scholarships to work with. There's a couple transfers on their radar, but they also have an eye to the future, as next year's high school class includes Bishop Gorman Shabazz Muhammad, who happens to be coached by Dave's brother Grant. The last thing we're going to do is use the scholarship just to use it. Uh, we do have two scholarships in 2012, guys who are juniors in high school right now, that is a terrific class. And so we want to make sure we leave ourselves plenty of scholarships for that. We want to do what's best for us now as well. Rice is hopeful he'll be able to announce the remainder of his coaching staff sometime in the next week. After that, maybe he'll finally get some time to catch his breath in the city where it all started as a player two decades ago. And this is home. A great years in Utah, great success at BYU. was really happy to be part of that, but uh, this is an alma mater, and it's great to be wearing red and great to look forward to the future. I couldn't imagine being a new coach uh, in this day and age of college basketball. The media, all the attention, yeah. uh, he's had a lot on his plate, but he's handling it well. Yeah, I like his uh, motto to priority Las Vegas. That's yeah. good for recruiting. There are a lot of great players, especially next year coming out of the series. So if he can land a couple of those, who knows? Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. All right, thanks, Scott. We'll be right back. An Easter tradition went to a whole new level in one North Carolina town today. More than 300 people turned out at the Carowinds theme park near Charlotte to take part in the world's largest Easter egg dyeing event. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, 317 people dipped and dyed eggs. The record book guidelines require each participant to have at least one hard boiled egg, a spoon, and enough dye to submerge the egg. That's one thing that I didn't do this year. I didn't dye eggs. I'm suddenly in the mood for a hard-boiled egg. Yeah, me right too. Now. But yeah, it's kind of fun to, to <laughs> isn't it, to dye an egg on Easter? It is. Oh, well, next year. <laughs> All right, well, that does it for us tonight at 11 on 8 News Now. Happy Easter, everyone.